Say to God, welcome to Sabbath School Devotion. My name, Edwin Estime. The overarching theme of Revelation shows us a cosmic battle between good and evil, between God and Satan. The battlefield is not some distant land, it's not on some countryside, it's not on some mountains, but it's in the mind. God and Satan are fighting for the mind of humans. And the command to fear God is to appeal from God to convince all those who are willing to come to his side. The command to fear God is to appeal to live a God-centered life. Let's talk more about this. But first, let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all that you have done for us, Lord. Lord, in this lesson, this devotion, help us that we may choose to fear you. We may choose to make you the center of our life. In Jesus we pray. Amen. This cosmic battle, this battle between good and evil, between God and Satan, is all for the control of our thoughts. And the centerpiece of this battle is you. It's me. It's every single individual who ever walked on this earth. I mean, we each have a pivotal role in deciding how this battle is going to end. We each have a role in deciding which side of eternity we will find ourselves in. And this is the reason why the Bible encourages us to choose God. As I said yesterday, fearing God is not an emotion. It's not a feeling. It's, it's a choice. It's an action. It's intentional living. The Bible itself, in many places, encourages us to make that choice to fear God. Paul in Philippians 2 verse 5 tries to persuade his readers to have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. Have this mind. Take this mind that was in Christ Jesus. Choose to live as he did. And again, to the letters um, in Colossians, Paul says that in Colossians 3 verse 1 and 2, if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above and not things that are on earth. Jesus himself said in Matthew 6 verse 33, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Jesus is calling us to seek him first, to seek his goodness, to seek his righteousness. He is calling us to make him the center of our lives. To fear God is to make him first in our lives. So how do we go about doing this? I mean, how can we make this applicable in our lives today? My mom used to have this saying um, that she used to tell me and my siblings where we were growing up. She says, Tell me who your friends are. Tell me who you're hanging out with, and I'll be able to tell you who you are. In, in essence, what my parents would try to warn us, trying to teach us, is that the environment that you place yourselves in will shape your thoughts and your actions. And this is the reason why Paul wrote this in Philippians 4, verse 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, Whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. If there is any excellence, is there anything worthy of praise? Think about these things. I mean, if you're going to fear God, if you if we want to make God the center of our lives, we have to place ourselves in environments that will allow us to do so. I mean, many of us allow COVID to be to make us part of Bedside Baptist, Bedside Methodist, Bedside um, Seventh-day Adventist Church. And, and no, I mean, an environment that promotes us to live uh, for God and fears God is within a church building, within especially the worship hour. There's no better experience than this when you at church. Um, many of us also consume media that only promotes sin and vices, such as drugs, stealing, lying, killing, violence, disrespect, self-harm, and self-hatred. I mean, how are we going to consider ourselves Christians, the followers of Christ, yet we willingly and intentionally allow our minds to consume things that only glorify sin and Satan? 
Brothers and sisters, I want to appeal to you with this verse found in Hebrews 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings us so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Verse 2, looking to Jesus, the founder and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, I want you to look at the track record of the two main contenders of the cosmic battle. Satan coveted the throne of God and caused a war in heaven. Jesus is the creator and the rightful king of the universe. Satan is the father of lies, hate, and sin. Jesus is love. Satan lied to our first parents to steal the authority of this world. Jesus sacrificed his life to take back the authority of this world. Satan enslaves us in misery and sin. Jesus frees us from the consequences of sin. Satan only wants the destruction and death for us. Jesus wants to us to have life and life more abundantly. At the end, Satan will and all those who follow him will be destroyed forever. And at the end, Jesus will be triumphant. And all those who believe in him, all those who accept him, and all those who fear him will share his reward of eternal life. Now, based off of these facts, whom do you choose? Saints of God, keep the faith.